about Jesus. Yeah. The prayers are about Jesus. Good morning and welcome to Thoburn United <laughs> Methodist Church. It is a blessing to see you all this morning and worship with you. I have a few announcements this morning. First of all, our Sunday evening small group at the Miser House is starting tonight at 6 p.m. This is an open invitation for anyone that would like to be part of a small group. We are going to be working through the book Present Over Perfect, but this is not a group where you are required to do any additional reading. This is a group where you are required to show up with an open heart and an earnestness to connect with God as we connect with each other. So if you would like to be a part of that, consider this your invitation to our home tonight at 6 p.m. We always start with some food because, of course, and then um, it is a time of growing with God and growing together. So we'd love to see you again um, at 6 p.m. at the Miser House. If you need any information, details, or directions, see me or Nick, and it is led by Mike Perkins. Our engaged team will be handing out snacks today at the final flag football games. This is at the high school stadium from one to three. If anyone would like to be involved in that, to sign, um, you can see Pastor Bill and show up today to help pass out um, some hot chocolate, some snacks, and to spread some love um, with those folks that are there. On October 22nd, we will launch our generosity campaign and we will be having a combined worship service. So there will not be a nine o'clock shine service. We will all be together at 10 a.m. That will be followed by lunch in our fellowship hall. And then we will be working together to package 10,000 meals for Rise Against Hunger. So we hope that folks will stay and will want to be a part of that. We need around 60 people to make this a successful event. And this is for everyone, kids of all ages, adults. There are jobs that you can do absolute, absolutely sitting down. Um, there are jobs that kids can participate in. So we hope that we get lots of folks that want to stay on October 22nd and help with that. On October 29th, it is our All Saints Sunday. So if you would like to share the name of a loved one, you need to contact the office by October 20th. I believe that that is all of the announcements. Oh, and the church office will be closed tomorrow in observance of, in observance of Columbus Day. It'll be open again on Tuesday. I believe that is all of the announcements. So if you will stand and join in worship with me, together we will sing. the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? The shame's done all it's seen. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about Me. 
together. Lord, what a privilege to tell others about Jesus, to share your joy and love with those around us. Thank you for the amazing grace that transforms lives so we can share the wonderful things you have done. We praise you, Lord, for the times we have felt your presence and heard your voice in our darkest and most desperate times. We thank you that we can turn to you for guidance and strength. We thank you for your forgiveness and the mercy you show to your children. We thank you that you are at the center of our joy. And we praise you for the moments we look around and are overwhelmed by the ways you show your love. Help us to boldly share our experiences. Help us to reflect your light to others. Help us to find meaningful ways to tell everyone about our Jesus. We pray this together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Father, thank you for the blessings you have poured out on us. You have given us more than we need and are abundantly good. Help us to remember we are blessed to be a blessing and serve others in your name. We pray for this church. We pray that we would learn to live in harmony as we seek to share your joy and peace. We pray that we would leave a legacy of love and care to this community. Guide us in our efforts to share your good news in meaningful ways. Guide us in our efforts to find new opportunities to love on our neighbors. Open our eyes and our hearts to your calling for new ministries, new ways to reach others with the gospel. We lift up those who are weary as they serve and ask for patience, strength, and endurance to keep going. We lift up ministries that feel under attack and ask that you would enable us to overcome evil and trust in your victory. We lift up those with a tug on their heart. We ask that you would help us all take that first step in obedience and in faith. We lift up those who have been a light in our lives because they chose to serve. Thank you for their encouragement, their knowledge, and their willingness, Lord. In all ways, we seek to glorify you, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us stand together. Thank you. 
There's only one way to the Father, and He's calling out to us. Love to see my dancing queens over there dancing again. Amen. Praise you guys. You always get me going over here. So. Uh, we welcome you. My name is Dave St. Alvin. I'm the senior pastor here at Thoburn. It's a joy to be with you. If you're visiting with us or uh, joining us online for the first time, we welcome you. And uh, thank you for being here with us this morning. For the last several weeks, we've been in this series titled Shaped for Significance. <clears throat> and when we began this series, you may recall... Uh, I mentioned that this was perhaps one of the most important series that we would go through together. Why? Because in order to be all that God has called us to be in this church, in our lives, in our community, in our ministry, in our service, in our mission, in our worship, in the work that Christ calls us to do, we have to know our shape. We have to know what God created us to do. And when we know what God created us to do, it reduces our stress because we're no longer trying to do something that we're not created to do. It increases our confidence because now I am doing something that I know I was created to do. And it opens up all kinds of doors to serving, to serving others and our work and our ministry, our lives in this church becomes more fulfilling and it becomes abundantly fruitful. And my friends, we are shaped. We are shaped for significance. We are created by God, uniquely, individually created, shaped to make a difference, a kingdom difference. Now, what is our shape? Well, we've been talking about this. Our shape is our spiritual gifts. That's the S. It's the gifts that God has given us, those, those gifts that, that are unique to us. Our shape is our heart. That's the H. It's our passion, our desires, those things that when we get up in the morning, we can't wait to do them. When we leave here today, I just I can't wait to get into that. It's our ambitions. Our shape is our abilities. 
That's the A. It's our talents. It's those things that, that we are capable of doing, things that no one else can do. Our shape is our personality. That's what we looked at last week. It's our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength, the way that we, that we uh, work in ministry to, to honor God, to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then the E is our experiences. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning, our experiences. How do our experiences shape us? Well, we all have this unique data bank of memories that, that we've tucked away, experiences that we have stockpiled in our minds throughout our lives. Every time we see something or we hear something, we try to relate that to, to some frame of reference within us. And we say, does that, does that line up with my experience? Does that jive with, with my experiences? Does that agree with what I've experienced in the past? For example, if you're a parent and I say to you, parenting is easy. Now you may say, yeah, Dave, it is easy, right? Or you may not agree with that. You may say, no, I'm sorry. Based on my experience, parenting is hard. If I were to say to you, high school was fun. Now, some of you may say high school was fun. I had a really great time in high school. Some of you may say, I hated it. I couldn't wait to get through it, right? It's all based on our experience. We've been shaped by many different experiences throughout our lives. Some of them good. Some of them not so good. Some of those were our choice, some of those were not. They were beyond our control. Well, what kind of experiences? Well, family experiences, experiences with your immediate family, right? A spouse, a partner, parents, siblings, children. Relationship experience with a partner. Perhaps an ex. Friendship experiences. We all have friendship experiences, childhood friends. High school friends, college friends, work friends, adult friends, church friends. We've all had different educational experiences. Where we went to school, when we went to school, the books that we read, the subjects that we learned, the teachers that we had. We've all had vocational experiences, experiences in our work, spiritual experiences. Those moments where we've had experiences with, with God that have touched our lives on a, on a spiritual level. We've had pleasant experiences and unpleasant experiences. Experiences we will never forget. Experiences we wish we could forget. Some experiences that we've forgotten about. All these things make up our shape. And here's the point of all this, is that God created us for purpose. God created us. He has a plan for our lives. He's uniquely shaped every one of us with these five things, including our experiences. Now, we don't always understand them. We don't always understand why is this taking place, but there's a purpose in them. In the Bible, we see a great example of this. One day, Jesus' followers were going through an experience that they had no idea why this was taking place. They just didn't get it. This is when Jesus was telling them about his coming crucifixion. In John 13, 7, Jesus said to them, you don't yet realize now what I am doing, right? You don't get it. This experience that you're going through, you don't understand it. But later you will. My friends, if you've ever wondered... Why am I going through this experience? Why is this taking place? What's the purpose behind this? I, I hope that, that you would hang on to uh, this message today, the notes that are in your bulletin, so that someday when you ask, why is this happening? You can go back to this. You can pull out these notes and you can see what God has to say about the purposes behind our experiences. So let's look at these. These are in your bulletins if you want to follow along. First, what's the purpose behind our experiences? Well, the first thing is, is they teach us to trust. They teach us 
to trust God. All throughout the Bible, we see this. Different experiences people have, uh, have that teach the us and them to trust God and to trust in God. In 2 Corinthians 1.9, Paul wrote to the church that this happened, this experience in my life, it took place, why? So that we might learn to trust, not in ourselves, but in God. When I was in seminary, one of my professors had a conversation that she shared with somebody who was uh, terminally ill with cancer. And as this man neared the end of his time, he was talking to her. And he said to her that I've been to the bottom of the pit, but it is rock solid. It's rock solid. Even there, even in the pain of his experience, even in not knowing why this was taking place, he was trusting, depending on Christ. Our experiences happen so that we might learn to trust, not ourselves but in God. And, and over my years as a, a pastor, uh, I received several letters from people who have, who have shared with me about their experiences that they've gone through, how they've, how they've discovered that depending on Jesus in a very difficult time has helped them through. And I want to just share some of their words with you this morning uh, to help put some light on, on the purpose in our experiences. One said, Dave, the greatest lesson I learned from my experience is that God will take care of me and provide for me if I trust him. If I trust him. Another said, Dave, I've learned through experience that trusting God really does work. Another wrote, Dave, the biggest thing I've learned from my experience was that letting go and letting God is a daily choice I have to make. Another wrote, Dave, this experience taught me to relax and trust God in all areas of my life at all times of my life. My friends, we never really know that God is all we need until God is all we have. When we face a difficult experience in life, our experience teach us to trust God. Here's the second purpose behind our experiences is that they help us to build our character. We don't grow our character by reading about life, right? If I gave you a book that said, this explains life, read this book, and, and you'll have it all figured out, wouldn't that be great? We don't grow by reading about life. We grow our character by experiencing life. Romans 5, 4, Paul wrote this to the church in Rome. We know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character character produces hope. You may want to write down that word character. Perseverance in our experiences builds our character. What kind of character? Well, like integrity. Integrity is learned through experience, right? When we do the right thing, when it would be much easier to do the wrong thing. Endurance. Endurance in life is learned through experience. When we keep pushing on, keep pushing forward, even though everything inside of us wants to give up. Responsibility. Responsibility is learned through experience, right? When we keep our commitments, we try to teach our kids that on responsibility, right? It's learned through experience. Sometimes at great personal cost, because we said we would do something. Proverbs 20.30 tells us sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. When you were a child, or if you have a child here, how many of you have ever said to a child, uh, don't touch the hot stove? Anybody ever said that? Don't, don't touch the electric outlet, right? Don't put your finger in the outlet. Don't put your finger in the moving fan blade, right? Anybody ever said that? Don't touch the wet paint. Anybody ever said that? Don't touch the wet paint. What do kids do when we say those things? They just want to do it, right? Some things, the only way we learned or learn is through experience. Touching the paint. Touching the hot stove. Touching the iron when it's on. Getting burned. Our experiences build 
our character. Some of us have learned some really tough things in life by getting burned. Some things the only way we learn is by experience. Sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. Our experiences build our character. Here's the third purpose is our experiences help us to accomplish God's purpose. In other words, everything that happens to us, there's a purpose behind it. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, his biggest dream, I want to go to Rome. I want to go to Rome and I want to preach in the church in Rome. Well, he went to Rome, but he was taken prisoner. He was falsely accused. He was put in handcuffs, put on a boat to sail to Rome. The boat shipwrecked. They finally made it there. When he got to Rome, he was put in a dungeon in a jail cell, handcuffed to a guard 24 hours a day for years. But in spite of all that, this is what Paul wrote about his experience. Philippians 1.12, whatever has happened to me, whatever my experiences have been, They've really just served to advance the gospel. That was the purpose behind Paul's experiences, sharing the gospel. And history records that even some of Caesar's family had turned to Christianity, followed Christ. There was purpose. Paul says, what's happened to me here? Really, it's just served the advance of the gospel. Our experiences have purpose. And so what do we do with all that, right? We say, well, good, Dave, you know, I get it. it they, they help us to grow and, and all this stuff, but so what, right? What am I supposed to do with all that? What do we do with our experiences? Well, first we need to examine them. We need to really look at our experiences. Take some time to review them, right? Ask ourselves, why did this happen? What was, what was the, the purpose behind it? Galatians 3, 4 tells us, did all of your experience mean nothing at all? Surely it meant something. What does your experience mean? What, what did it teach you? Our unexamined experiences of the past are wasted if we don't let them benefit our future. We need to examine our experiences. And ask, why, why didn't this work, right? What went wrong? Look, look for a pattern in that. Don't waste the hurt. Don't waste the pain. The Phillips translation of this verse says, has all your painful experience brought you nowhere? Our, our, our daughter, when she had her first child, first child, so excited. He died at birth. What's the purpose behind that? What's the purpose behind a, a baby dying? She ended up changing her career path, went to seminary, received a master's in divinity, and is now a chaplain at Children's Hospital in Columbus, helping other families, other parents, who are going through the same thing. Her experience has led her to help others. My friends, if we don't examine our experiences, we're, we're not going to grow from them. We may even find ourselves making the same mistake over and over and over again. The Bible says in Proverbs that the fool never learns from his mistakes. Now experience, it doesn't teach everybody. And the teachers in, in the, the room here, uh, does everybody learn through teaching? You have to be teachable to be taught, right? You have to be willing to learn. We have to be willing to learn from our experiences. Second, we need to extract the lessons that we learn. In other words, look for, for principles, look for insights. Ask yourself, what, what, do, what can I learn from that? God, what are, you, what are you trying to teach me in this? Deuteronomy 11.2 says, remember what you have learned about the Lord through your experiences with him. Remember what you have learned. That's what God wants us to do. Remember what you've learned 
My first marriage ended horribly. Horrible divorce. I've learned a lot out of that. I, I've learned what God had behind that. What, what the purpose of it, not that God created that. But what was God trying to teach me in that? Remember what you have learned. Why? So that we can grow from it. Third, our third purpose is to, uh, or, or our third thing we can do with our experiences is we can tap into the experiences of others, right? We can learn from other people. It's been said that the average person learns from their own experience. The wise person learns from the experience of others. The fool learns from neither, right? If I touch the hot stove, I learn from my own experience. Pastor Bill touches the hot stove, and I watch him burn his hand on the hot stove. I'm going to say I'm not going to touch the hot stove because I've learned from his experience. If we both touch the hot stove, then neither one of us have learned. And, uh, it's his fault. Learn from the experiences of others. Proverbs 27, 17 tells us people learn from one another just as iron sharpens iron. Proverbs 25, 2, a warning given by an experienced person to someone willing to listen is more valuable to gold. Amen? Boy, if we could teach that to the kids. Boy, if I would have listened to that one growing up, and if I would have listened to my parents. The best advice we often receive comes from somebody who's been through the same thing and can teach us. They've been there. Who better to help somebody else than, than somebody who could say, hey, you know what? I, I see what you're about to do. Don't do it. I've been there. Don't touch the hot stove, Bill. I'm trying to tell you. And then the fourth thing we can do with our experiences is use them to help others. We learn from other people, and we use our experiences to help other people. Because we all have these experiences stockpiled in our minds, things we've been through, right? And, and, and if nobody ever benefits from that, what purpose have they served? What, what good are they? First Thessalonians 5.11 says, encourage one another, help one another. In that verse are the two things we can do with our experiences. We can encourage others. We can help others. Ask yourself, who am I sharing my experiences with? The good, the bad, the ugly. Because you have experiences in your life that nobody else has gone through that you can use to help somebody else. Like what? Loss of a loved one? We've all been there. Experiences in that situation that you can use to help somebody else? A painful divorce? An illness that's caught you completely off guard, that's an experience that you can use to help somebody else. A job loss, a bankruptcy, your kids going down a wrong path, your grandkids going down a wrong path. See, we can use all of these. I, I don't know your experience, but here's what I've been through. And here's what helped me through that. God wants us to use our experiences to, to minister to other people, to encourage them, and to help them. When you use your experiences to help somebody else, that's just called ministry. That's all that is. And that makes all of us ministers. Did you know you're a minister? You are. We all are. My friends, don't, don't waste your experiences. Use them to help others and allow others to help us. 2 Corinthians 1, 5, and 6 tells us God gives us comfort in all of our trials. Why? So that we in turn may be able to give the same sort of strong sympathy to others in their troubles. God takes us through the problems of life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. 
fear no evil because you are with me. God helps us. God encourages us. And God wants us to do the same thing with others. Helping people through what you've already been through is called ministry. Examine it. Extract the lessons from your experiences. Learn from others who have gone through experiences and use your experiences to help and encourage them. There's, there's great benefit in that. We, we've looked at this for six weeks. Our shape, our, our God-given shape, who we are, our gifts and our desires, our passions, our, our abilities, those things we can do, all of our unique personalities, all of our experiences. Look around here. Nobody in here has the same shape as you. Nobody. It's what makes you you. You are God's masterpiece. That, that word, I've shared that in Greek, is poema, right? You are God's poem. Unique creation. Created with a purpose. With gifts desires, abilities, personality, experiences that you are shaped for significance. I encourage us all to use what we've looked at over the last several weeks and that we use them to help other people. There's one final letter I want to share with you that I received from somebody. It said, Dave, the greatest lesson I've learned from my experience was this that there are people all around us waiting to be ministered, in all, ministered to in all kinds of areas if we are just willing to look. And that's my prayer as we head out into our day, into the weekend, into our week, that we would just look around. There, there are so many people who don't understand the comfort in that, that don't understand the forgiveness, the grace, the mercy, the encouragement, that we receive from Jesus Christ. So many don't, don't know that. There are people all around us just waiting to be ministered to if we're just willing to look. Use your shape. Friends, this, this isn't something where, you know, Bill and I are going to say, all right, here's a committee. Get on this committee. Serve on this committee. Do your time. Sometimes it's a lifetime. The, the, our shape is our ministry. You are uniquely created. Use what you have. And use that to help others. That they come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Won't you please pray with me? And I'm going to ask us to make a commitment this morning. That next to inviting Christ into your life is perhaps one of the greatest commitments you can make. And I want to challenge us all in this time of prayer to commit to God to using the shape that God has created you with. So let's take a moment to pray. And, and, and God, I, today I, I hear your word and, and I make this commitment that I give it all to you. I give it all to you. It all belongs to you, and I give it to you. I want to give you my experiences of the past, the good ones, the bad ones, the unforgettable ones, the ones I wish I could forget. Lord, I want to give you the potential of my tomorrow. I want to be available to be used for the purpose that you created me for. And so help me to discover my ministry, Lord. And Father, I look out on the faces in this church family and I see the amazing potential in this church. When I think of the untapped wealth of experience in this church family, knowing that if we all mobilized and committed ourselves to you, God, that there would be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this community that would make people stand up and take notice. Help us. Lord, to commit all that we have to you. Help us to realize that you are building character in us. Help us to trust you. Help us to realize that we are not just nobodies who, who don't have any purpose in this life, but that you will use each and every one of us if we just give ourselves to you. And that like Paul, 
our experiences would help to advance the gospel. Jesus, it's in your name that we give thanks and pray. Amen. It's always been a mystery All my life I've been told I belong At the end of the line With all the other not whites With all the never getting right But it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Well, Moses had stage right David brought a rock to a sword fight. He picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen. And he changed the world. The moral of the story is everybody's got a purpose. When I hear that devil start talking to me, saying, who do you think you are? I say, I'm just nobody trying to tell everybody. All about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Let me go down, down, down as another blood bought faithful member of the family And if they all forget my name, well that's fine with me I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus Cause I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm Living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we leave here today, I pray that you fully understand that, that you are not just a nobody. You were created with a purpose. Use the shape God created you for, for significance. Make a kingdom difference. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor, grant you his peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.